Welcome to Southwest Yard and Garden. I'm John White. Today we're going to be talking about some plant problems with Dr. Natalie Goldberg, and Natalie is the extension plant pathologist. Welcome, Natalie. Thank you, John. We're going to be talking about a problem that is fairly common on especially japonicas, and that's powdery mildew. You want to tell us a little bit about what we have here, Natalie? Well, you've got a, a classic specimen, basically. Uh, this particular plant, uh, Euonymus is very, very susceptible to powdery mildew, which is a common problem in our dry uh, southern climate. Now, this is not a water or humidity related disease, like well, a lot of people think? All diseases require certain, you know, moisture and temperatures, but this particular organism does very well in our, in our relatively dry climate. Um, shaded condition like this will enhance that a bit and probably why this particular specimen is uh, doing so well as far as the mildew goes. Now as far as uh, you said classic examples, can you talk a little bit about the, the way you go through mildew starting out with just, is it start out with just small spots and then? Right, you'll, you'll start out with uh, basically just a single spore infection and that infection will build on the plant and then this particular organism produces a lot of spores which is that powdery substance that you see and those spores get moved around with the wind or uh, by brushing against it and it starts up new infections and this one's obviously been going for a while we've got a lot of different leaves almost every leaf in fact has uh, at least one spot on it. Now as far as control measures, what are we looking at if you, we have a bush that's this badly infected? Well, this badly infected, you're gonna have a battle on your hands because once powdery mildew gets going, it's very difficult to stop. Uh, most of the control methods we have really are preventative. And I would say about this particular plant, it's almost impossible to keep it off completely unless you do a lot of uh, routine applications of chemicals, which is not exactly where we wanna go. So this particular plant, you might, uh, well, this specific plant, you might be fighting quite a battle. Um, pruning uh, it up nicely, getting some, uh, maybe some air movement through here. In other words, making it a little bit uh, less compact and dense. Uh, sweeping up uh, the fallen leaves and things like that will do a lot as far as removing some of the debris and, and the excessive uh, inoculum that's there. And um, then there would be some uh, chemicals that you could use if you wanted to try to, to stop the spread of it. Okay, so uh, as far as just anything that's recommended for powdery mildew control, we could spray on it? Right, the ornamental fungicides that are available, you can go everywhere from an organic material such as sulfur on up to some of the more um, specific chemicals. Okay. okay, thank you, Natalie. I have another problem we need to take a look, so if you want to follow me over. Natalie, some of the other problems that we run across are tree-related problems. Now here's an example of one we see a lot in willows, cottonwoods, different kind of plants. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what's going on there? Yeah, it looks like what you're seeing here is a fairly common problem that we have uh, in New Mexico, and that's called slime flux or bacterial wetwood. Natalie, as far as slime flux, is there a control for it? Well, that's another one that's difficult. Once the plant gets infected, it's going to stay infected for the rest of its life. You can lessen the impact of the disease on the tree with good water and fertilizer management, but you won't get rid of it. Okay. Now, you said it is more common in, in kind of weak wooded, fast growing type trees? Right. It's a bacterial problem, and there's several different bacteria actually that can do it. And what the bacteria needs is an entrance into that plant. And so, either a natural growth crack or a heat stress that might like a sunburn or even a freeze injury. Or, or an improper pruning cut will be enough to allow that bacteria to get in and start its decay. Okay. Can it be spread by pruning tools? It can be, although normally uh, we don't see a whole lot of that because it's not there at the time that you prune. But okay. if you prune a tree that's infected, you certainly could move it from one place to another. Okay. Now some of the weak wooded trees would be cottonwood, Cottonwood, willow, elm, elm. Uh, willow are probably the three most common and also the mulberries will will see problems in that we don't generally see problems in things like ash and oak those that are slower growing and harder wood okay, now mesquites is that a slime flux that we see in mesquite? mesquite get a little bit of a different problem it's kind of similar but uh, not exactly the same thing okay so best thing to do is just not to plant fast growing trees <laughs> well you want to be real careful growing. with them you want to make sure that when you do prune them that you prune them correctly and eliminate at least that part of the problem um, if you can help to sort of keep them dormant a little bit in the spring and try to get them to go dormant quickly in the fall, that'll help as far as freeze injury. And of course, if you can do anything to prevent sun damage on the trunk, 
that'll help as well. Okay. Now, one form of the flux that we see a lot on, on willows is the real frothy uh, looking foam that comes out of the tree. A lot of people right. think that's caused by a borer. Uh, no, that's the bacterial problem. Now, it is very attractive to insects. It has kind of a foul odor that they tend to like, and so you will see a lot of insect activity around those trees, but it's not the, the insects that are actually causing it. Okay. Okay, and we've been talking about some of the problems that we see in uh, yards this time of year, some of the things that viewers might want to keep their eye out for. You've probably seen it one time or another, so hopefully we've given you some good information to, to help you deal with the problem at hand. Uh, so again, Natalie, I'd like to thank you very much for being a guest on Southwest Yard and Garden. You're welcome.